So what I want to talk to you about today is expressing yourself. Um, when I started in the WordPress world, it started out just creating my own blog. And my struggle was to how to come up with what I call the WordPress voice. Now, this is going to be geared towards more of a blog concept, but this does apply for small businesses, anybody that's trying to create a website. It doesn't matter what, you know, what the, uh, the reason you're on the web is. It's more about creating a consist consistent voice and making it clear so people come to your site and come back. So, when you create a website, you want to make sure people understand what your website's about. You want to make sure your voice is clear. <laughs> are you a squirrel or are you a horse? A lot of people don't know the he horse-headed squirrel, so that's probably a good example of something that's not consistent and clean. Unfortunately, when it comes to a good web presence, no, not everybody's figured it out. Um, you're winging it. You know, you, you see a lot of bad. How many people go on a website and look at it and wonder, what the heck am I looking at? What are they trying to say? <laughs> it makes you go, ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I, I, I can stare at him do that for a while because I do that myself several times a day. You got some explanation though. <laughs> I thought about pulling audio in for him, but uh, I, that would take up my whole half hour, so I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, we could, we could. Have, this could be the fun presentation, but we're not here for that. We're not here for fun. Sure, we are. So, every website, every person that's on the web, you could be a blogger. You have one blog post out there. You could be a small business. You could be Amazon. You could be any of these companies. But your online presence, it has a voice, and that voice is telling you about you, your brand. Um, if you're just an individual blogger, it's just who you are. It's just cute, it's small, it's regular. You get into some of the bigger companies out there, it's no different. You think about Coca-Cola. They have a voice. They have a brand. It all goes together. What would, if you had to give me a couple of words, a word, when you think of Coca-Cola, what would you think it is? It's a real thing. They sell happiness. If you think about it, well, tradition though, especially like not right now at Christmas, it's all the Christmas things, they're always about tradition. Um, you know, you have the 9-11 with the Clydesdale Horses commercials I hear once. Everything Coca-Cola has done has been about tradition. They've been doing the same voice, I think I read since 1886, so what, 100 and almost 30 years? So that's their voice. And they have these little messages and they vary it throughout the year. You know, in the summer it's about refreshment and, and the, the, the wonderful taste. Um, they did that thing recently with the uh, names on the cans and connecting with other people, which from a voice point of view brought them so much business. They actually had a lift. What about this company? What do you think of when you see the logo or see their advertisements? Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Their voice, their message is about overcoming the obstacles, overcoming your own physical or mental obstacles. Just do it. Just get out there. Get in shape. Get away from the computer, go outside for a walk, go running, whatever it is. What about the arches? I, I know. I, I realize the whole hilarious connection between Nike and McDonald's. What do, you, what do you think of when you think of their story, their voice? Just eat it. <laughs> Say it again? I just eat it. <laughs> you know what? You might be able to submit that. They might want to do that. And it's actually funny because they used to, and this, this comes from their website, they used to be all about um, their the cheap, quick meal, just get in and get out. Hey, everybody come here. And they've actually tried to change their their voice in the last six, seven years about being a nice place to go, a good customer experience. So you got three big companies all have their own voices. Some have stayed the same for over 100 years. Some have morphed as the market needed them to. It's their voice. And they share their voice. Coca-Cola. 2.7 million followers on Twitter. 1,200 new added a day. 
They tweet nine original tweets a day. Talk about engagement. So that whole voice that you're going to create for your own personal little world, their world's much bigger, they extend it. They're on Instagram, 391,000 followers, and all of their posts in November got between 10 and 20,000, uh, oh, sorry, 10, 20,000 likes. So they're very much engaged on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, 91 million fans. I know nobody here has that many friends. 7% of the total Facebook user base as of October. That's tremendous. So I've touched on these big companies. They have their voice and they extend it. They extend it into social media. They're trying to reach the world. Now obviously Coca-Cola is trying to make mega sales. If you're just a blogger like me, you might just try to reach a couple dozen people. It doesn't matter. It's all about the voice that you're putting out there and doing it right. So you have four goals when you get on the web. Make it easy for someone to find your site. You don't want to have to make them claw and dig at it. Whether it's the name of your site or some of the content and it has the good keywords in it. It's not an SEO talk, so we're not going to go into SEO, but you want them to be able to find your site. What does that mean, specifically? Well, I want them to find my site. <laughs> if the, and I'm going to get into it, but the name of your website, the URL, things like that. If say you say you're sell, say you're say you're a small business, this company that's out here giving away these drinks. Which, by the way, if you like coffee, this espresso sparkling stuff is awesome. <laughs> but. The name of the company, the keywords in their tagline, in the name of the website, things like that when somebody's Googling, and it's funny how that's a verb, and, uh, but when somebody's Googling and trying to find a particular topic, how does somebody that doesn't know you, you know, how are they going to find you? And that's part of having a voice is, the whole, I mean, you're out there because you want somebody to hear you. So you want them to be able to find you. Once you get them there, well, yeah, I like cats. Who doesn't? Animated, animated cats at a work camp. It's not, it's not unusual. You get used to it. Well, once you have them there, the way you build your site, the way it looks, their overall experience, you want them to stay and look around. Now, you know, you think back to those big companies I was talking about earlier. They have massive teams, massive budgets. You know, they have, peop they have five people that just do user experience and just move this button here over five pixels. We don't have that in this room. Nobody here has that kind of funding. You don't have those kinds of teams. At most, if you're a small business, you'll have two or three people. One person might be a marketing person. You don't have that kind of help. So you have to figure out how to pique their interest. And some of it's by building good content, but it's also by making all the little choices I'm going to show you and making them work, making them look good. After they've left, you want to make them come back. Looks like a cat. Now. You want him to reach it, don't you? Red panda. No, it's a red panda. So, they've been on your website. You got them there. They like what they saw. You want them to come back. You know, and we're not talking about ads or anything. Even, you know, remember, you're on the web for a reason. It's because you want somebody to click on your site. There's nobody that builds a website just so nobody hears it. It's like going out in the middle of the courtyard and just yelling something and doing it at 3 in the morning when nobody's here. No, you don't do that. You do it when everybody's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, enough mimosas and then throw in a little bit of caffeine and yeah, it's, there, there's always exceptions. Nothing's absolute. But once you've got them to come back to your site, you also want them to find you in other places. So you want to extend your voice to your entire online presence. So that way you're not this little squirrel body and this horse head Social media, you don't have a horse head on Twitter and a squirrel body on Facebook. You want to be consistent. So you want to, you want to be, be able to extend that voice that you're creating on your site into the rest of the world, and that's social media. And how do you do it? You use your WordPress voice. We're getting there. Because you're not a Jedi. Yeah, you know, it's funny when, when you're trying to find pictures, what you can find out there. And I, I didn't want to go traditional with Darth Vader doing things. I found that and... 
I mean, there's enough of us nerds in the room that can appreciate a little bit of dressing up, not just on Halloween, and so, but you're not a Jedi, you don't have magic powers, so all you can do is do your best and try. <laughs> With enough mimosas, <laughs> you think you are, you're amazing what you think you can do. So, you're not a Jedi, you don't have magic power, so by creating this WordPress voice, making it consistent, ma making it reach the web to uh, social media, you'll get people. So how do you do it? It starts there. That, that's me. It starts with your URL, your web address. Uh, how many people I know, I own 55 domains. And they don't know what to do with them, they just have them in case they want to use them one day. That's on the high end of the number. You know, how many, how many of you have more than one website that you own, whether it's actually published or not? All right, so you have, you have multiple domains. I do, I mean, a lot of people do. But what are you gonna do with them? Are you gonna use it? You, you, you obviously save the name for a reason. You save that URL because it was something that you thought was relevant to you, maybe not now, maybe later. So that's the most important thing. Get the, get the web address before somebody else steals it. You know, how do you think John Twitter felt you know, 10 years ago before he uh, bought twitter.com? You know? So get a web address, buy the domain, different session, talk about hosting and domains, things like that. Now, the name of your website doesn't have to necessarily match. It doesn't have to match the URL. My website, Idle Rumblings. And there's a story behind that, but I'll get there. I rumble a lot, I ramble a lot, and uh, it fit. It's not necessarily the name of my website. It's not our, our coffee. My name is Rich Robin Coffee. R and then coffee. It was something cute. So that's just my personal website that I've had for a couple of years. I don't do much with it, but it's me. When I created my blog, Idle Rumblings. It fit me. It fit what I was thinking. The way, the way that came about was actually, I was sitting there telling somebody on Facebook, uh, I was ranting about something, I'm like, sorry about my idle ramblings I was typing. Well, autocorrect, who's had autocorrect issues here? For some reason, I don't know how ramblings turned into rumblings. <coughs> I liked it, so it stuck. So I now use idle rumblings. A tagline, so this is the trifecta. You've got a URL rcoffee.com. Idle Rumblings is what I call my blog. Describe it. Come up with something catchy to support it. Don't forget, taglines will show up in Google too. So as people are searching, things like this do matter. When they get to your website, having it, having your tagline show up right away, gadget-loving, techie, highly caffeinated foodie, that, that's me. That's, it's simple. It can be simple. It should be short and simple. If somebody sees your website and sees your tagline and can't get it in a couple of seconds, you've made your tagline way too complicated or it just doesn't fit, it's dull. Yes? How long should that be? Everybody has a different opinion on it. I, I, I think this fits, um, well, and what is that, 50 characters maybe? You know, 30, 50, 60 characters, it's one of those things. Make it fit, be short and concise, keep it simple, but let it tell the message. This took me a couple of days. My, my wife and I were sitting there batting around. You know, well, how would you describe me? And I made a list, I made a list of keywords. I like gadgets, I'm a techie, and they're two different things. I love my coffee, that's part of the R coffee, I'm a coffee fanatic, and I'm a foodie, I like to eat. So. It just, well, why not just make idle rumblings thoughts of a gadget-loving, techie, and highly caffeinated foodie. So right now I've got my URL, I've got my blog name, and I've got a tagline. So at this point, you've got enough to start. You've got your voice. I'm a gadget-loving techie. That's my voice. That'll carry forward in everything I do. <clears throat> do you have a logo? Okay, for those of you that are just flying solo, you're just starting a small website, you eventually want to turn into something that, well maybe you sell some things on it, or you're a small business. Everybody should have a logo. Everybody, everybody should have some kind of representation of them that's not their picture, not their face. 
this was something, I was a student, I was in some design classes, and I was in the, I think this is, I don't know Adobe well, I was in Adobe Illustrator week, and they told us to make our icon. Well, and yeah, it's not pretty. I'm not a designer, I'll say that now, it's not pretty. But that's my, that was my first graphic I ever made, so I'm very proud of that, and that will, that will be with me for eternity, or until somebody pays me and makes you know good money and I can make it fancy, but having a logo that represents you, because that logo will be visible other places, people will remember it. Building a theme here, you know, you're memorable, you're consistent. Having a simple logo, if, if you, and if you can't draw, I can't draw, if you can't design, you don't have the, the, the tools, it's not expensive to find a graphic designer to make a simple one. Yes, even you small bloggers, there's no such thing as a small blog. Everybody that's out there that wants to say something, their voice matters. So, create a, create a logo. If you have a logo, this little thing that you see in your browser tab, that's a fave icon. Who here that has a site actually has their fave icon set up? Okay. It wasn't that difficult, right? WordPress, I, I use, what is it? Fave icon by real fave icon generator. You pull in a picture and they set it up for all, with the fave icons you need to have like eight images for all the different, uh, you know, Internet Explorer, Chrome, the Windows devices. So if you bothered getting an icon, why not extend it and have the fave icon? You know, now we're getting into the periphery. It's not that important, but since you've gone to the trouble and you've been building your voice here, make your little fave icon. Make it so that way somebody can go to your website and they recognize that. Now, you'll see my site in a second. That logo doesn't show up anywhere. We'll talk about that in a, in a, in a minute. Why? Yeah? You, can you answer the question, what the heck is that? Because I'm not familiar with a fave icon. Okay. What's the, what is it? So. And what is the purpose of it? Other than to, well, is it just there to, to remind people of your logo? It's losing favor. It's not as big as it used to be. Because like right now, Safari on the Macs, the new version of Safari, it doesn't show your whole website name and it only shows, it doesn't show like all, all the WP dash, everything else after it. And so I think the fave icons, they're not there anymore either unless you change the setting. So they're starting to lose favor in the web world. But all it is, and that's why I said it's not a huge deal to have it, but if you're going to go to the trouble of building an icon, this is a PNG file, a graphic file of what I built in Illustrator. You take that same PNG file, and if you're in WordPress and you install that uh, fa yeah, what was it? fave icon, by, and I'm, not in, I'm endorsing them saying I use them and they're good. There's, a few, there's quite a few of them. Fave icon, who do you mean? Fave, and I'll, when I post my slides, I'll have links and stuff. But fave icon by real fave icon generator. And all you do is you take, you have your icon in your media library, and you pull it in to the generator, and it'll go out to their website, and it'll create all the files. And 8, 10, 12, 16, I forget what it is, but there's all these different sizes. They, they tell you the rules. It needs to be square dimensions, like 200 by 200. And, and, and why? Because when, when you're browsing, and you have a tab open with the site. It's just there. It's a, it's a little visual cue. That's right. It's That's right. yeah. I'll show you. It's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. When 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 you have twenty five tabs open, all you're seeing now is this. Right. So it's a little visual cue. And to remind people who you are. Put on your emails as well. You send out emails. I don't I don't do email blasts or anything like that. So I. I, nothing sophisticated like that. They should. According according to the site, they should. So I. I yeah, I know on Apple device. In, in fact, the generator has a thing where it sets up where it'll tell you this will work on Windows 8 laptops because you can, you can actually set it up so on Windows 8 the tiles it'll actually show up there. So and that's another thing as Windows 8 grows. I'm a, Mac, I'm a Mac guy, so I'm not going to make the Windows joke, but as Windows 8 grows and you have those tiles, you can actually create a fave icon that will work as part of a tile. So say you have somebody's site that you really like, if you create the fave icon and it has the Windows 8 tile, that'll be the, the little metro panel. So you've personalized all these things. You've got a name, a URL, tagline, icon, 
It's actually not a lot, but it takes a lot of effort to do it right. You know, you want to make sure you've built it all so it all matches. Right? So you've got your site now, and you've got all these things planned, and then you create your site. Oh my god, it's so boring. It's just a regular site. It doesn't look like anything. So you got them there, but they're not going to st they're not going to stay. They're going to be like, oh, this is so you know. It's not okay. It's not 1999. You don't have flashing colors and letters, and you know. Let's not go back to that. That would have been a good insert here, huh? You know, you you, you don't have that. It's but it's so generic. And once again, you're building a voice. You're you're worried about all this stuff. You create an icon. Well, make your site look good. Get people interested. So, and and that's where one of the my favorite parts of WordPress is, is the themes. Whether you build your own theme or you pay somebody to build a theme for you, or you just go out there and just use somebody else's. So here's my website on the left. Actually, my wife's on the right. Mine is the 80s theme. It fits me. I'm, I'm a child of the 80s. I'm from New York City originally. It's Times Square. And, you know, gadget, caffeinated, that's loud. It worked for me. And it's just a simple block, so it didn't have to have a lot of features. <coughs> if you look at my wife's on the other side, it's cutesy. It's a humor blog, humor and crafting. So it's fun. It catches your eye more. Which one? The one on the right catches your eye. Of course, I, it's, I just, it's the colors, the bright colors. And, and that was, the, the, my wife's back there smiling. Um, and that's, that was the whole point, because, and if you want to hear some funny stories, Nickel does get into quite a few pickles. She's, now she's turning red. So, but here's two finished websites that have a consistent voice. Yes, I'm bragging. I'm saying I have a consistent voice. I hope I do. You talked about the fave icons. There's her little pickle. There's my coffee cup. So imagine you have 25 tabs. Well, you know where to go back. It's a small, minuscule effort in the big scheme of things, but it helps. It extends it. You'll notice I don't have, she has her nickel and a pickle logo that she made herself. She was in the same class. She's much better. She's, she's artsy. I'm not. I can't even draw a circle or a straight line. Thank God for Max. I don't have a logo, and that's, that's because of the theme. I've picked this theme because it worked for me. So your logo might not show always. That's a choice I had to make because I'm not trying to sell something. So my logo doesn't have to show. These are all the thoughts that you have to consider when you're building your WordPress voice, when you're building your site, when you're building your online presence. Do, you, do all these things have to be there? How do they show? When you're looking at the themes, I could have the, lo the logo show, but it would, the coffee cup would look horrible right here. I didn't want it. I wanted to see Times Square. So, and I'm not selling anything. I'm just having fun. So it didn't need to be there. Now that you've, oh, and as far as the themes, what I will warn, if, if, you're, if you're out there searching for themes, please never Google free WordPress theme and go to somebody you don't know because you, you don't want to do that. You know, it, it kind of goes with the plugins, and we're not, it's not a developer talk, but, you know, plugins, themes, find something that's by somebody that's reputable and that updates it regularly and, and it's got good reviews. Those are the things you always want to keep in mind. Please do that because... When you get a bad theme that's not updated and it's broken, like when WordPress updated recently, the security update, it broke a lot of plugins. Well, there's themes out there too that just didn't work because the code wasn't written good. So choose carefully, but have some fun with the themes. I change my theme routinely. That one's been on there for a couple of months. I'm probably going to change it soon. It's, it's a whim. It's a personal blog. It's okay. Yeah? Is there any kind of website you go to to get reviews of different things that are out there? Obviously, if I go to a guy who makes things, his reviews are going to look really good. What do you guys think? What do you use? The reviews are on the same page when you're checking them out. Yeah, but he's talking about something that they came from. We don't know where those reviews came from. It came from people that use the thing. But well, in the reviews, you are. Yeah. If you just go to WordPress.org and go to the There you go. That's what I was waiting for. You will see plenty that are very well reviewed, some not so well. And this, you know, if you have it set up, you can experiment around. You can just try all different things. Yeah. What, what? One thing I, after I had mine all set up, I'm, I'm brand new to all this, but then I would try to change the theme and the content didn't, the picture, it didn't work correctly. And, and, and that's where, like, the theme customizer 
WordPress has enhanced how the theme customizers work. It's easier to test the theme out before you actually adopt it. So yeah, try the themes. I mean, start with WordPress and look at the themes they have there. There's a lot. You don't have to go to some of these external sites. You can, it's your choice, but there's plenty in-house, I'll call it. And there's a lot of reviews and the reviews are by people that are users. And if you only have one review, well, that could be the person's brother. Maybe you don't want to use that one. But if your theme has 500 reviews and it's got four and a half stars, odds are it's good. Yeah. Do, they, do they charge for that and is there a fee to use the well, and, and this is where you kind of get into the whole .com versus .org, WordPress, and now it's very easy to find on the .org, the self-hosted side, which is what I'm concerned about. Um, it's a lot easier. It's it's a lot. It's very easy to find well, free. WordPress has a, the, you can change your themes, but like if you want to go find something that they don't offer, it it, it varies. Okay. Sometimes you get the free version, yeah. and it'll be limited, and then you get the premium. Like and actually. The Sugar and Spice theme, that's actually Sugar and Spice Pro, and that developer charged $14, and it wasn't a huge amount of features, but it was, well, I'm supporting a developer, fellow developer, 14 bucks, we paid for the Pro theme, and it gave a few extra enhancements. Support was great, a couple times there were a couple of issues. Sent an email, they were in Poland, I think, and they emailed back 12 hours later, when it was their daytime, so, you, you know, you never know. And, and Your wife hired a Polish theme builder. There's a joke waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, she, I kid, the Polish, I kid. She, but she loves the theme. It was perfect. So we ran with it because I couldn't make anything better quickly, easily. And 14 bucks that I can support another developer? I was just kidding. Oh, I know. So you have all this done. You've created your site. You got to tell them about you because everything so far has kind of been about the facade, the voice, you know, our coffee, I'm just a coffee cup. I'm some geek, some tech loving gadget geek, coffee, that coffee lover. Well, you have something on a lot of the sites called about me. Find out about this person, find out about this company, this small business. This is where you tell them about you. This is where you bring it back and make it a little bit more personal. They know you, they know the person behind the voice. So don't forget to do the About Me page. And make it short and simple. You don't want to have a novel. It doesn't have to be, you know, oh, that's you. Oh, I rec you, know, you recognize this person, you recognize that person. So this is where the whole connection goes between having the personal face and identity behind the voice. And then you want to extend your voice. I was just saying about Twitter. You've built everything, you've built your site. If appropriate, think back to what Coke does. They're on, they have a Pinterest, I didn't highlight it. They have a LinkedIn page, it's their corporate page. You know, if you go to Coca-Cola on LinkedIn, it's their corporate page. All of these things though are extending their voice. They have this big multi-billion dollar voice. You have your simple free, I can't afford to pay for a designer voice possibly. And yeah. I'm back on the Gravatar slide. You're back on the Gravatar? As a woman, I feel uncomfortable doing that. Um, is there a site you can go to have a cartoon of that done? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what would that be? <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I, I say that in my web development class all the time to my students, Google it. Yeah, I, I don't know any offhand, I haven't done that. I know exactly what you're talking about and I read the stories and I see the things about you know, personal security, and I don't like having myself out there. I'm, I'm very guarded. I'm a New Yorker. I'm, you know, New York City street kid. I'm guarded. I get it. Yeah, it's much. Yeah. You could, you could Google it and find. Uh, you can, you know, there's creators. Um, actually. This, my voice, my wife's. Uh, Icon started out, I forget, do you remember where you went to build it? Do you remember it was just a, a site that just let you draw? You know, yeah, I, it's been a while, but she took what she had done on the uh, caricature website, 
built it, and then she went back in Illustrator when she was in the Illustrator class and actually created that. But it looked very similar. So at times, her profile will show that. At times, it will show her face for the very same reason. You can, you can make a gravatory of anything. You can make it out of photo or, or, or design or anything, really. Well, I want it to be as me, but not that clear. There's, there's even things on the camera on your computer. Yeah. The pop art setting, you can make all kinds of things. Here, let me show you your stuff. See, you have to So. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to hold the next session. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. There's actually my final slide talks about share what you know. I say it again, I'm a teacher, and I try to get my students to sit there after class and get on Facebook with each other, talk to each other, help each other. This is a community. You're here because you want to be part of the WordPress community. That's what WordCamp is. And this is an opportunity for you to learn from each other. You're here, you're, I have a full room, which, thank you, by the way, this blows, and only a couple people left. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm honored. I am honored. It's very humbling that you care enough to hear about what I say. And I hope that one day one of you chooses to speak. I mean, it's not easy, but it's fun because I see smiling faces. Everybody's engaged. That's the fun part about WordCamp is when, when you get a chance to interact and share learnings and ideas. So don't stop today. If you talk to somebody and you like what they have to say, what they think, reach out to them. I'm on Twitter. Follow me. I don't, have, I don't say a lot on Twitter. Between work and work, you know, there's not a lot of time. But I say, I, say, I also don't talk stupid stuff. So, you know, sometimes you get tired of social media. But that's why, and, and part of that is because I extend my voice through social media. I don't make a lot of tweets that are, Nonsense. I, I, I speak my voice. So when you do extend your voice out to all the different services, like I don't have an Instagram or a Pinterest. I have no reason to. It's just not me. It's your choice, but if you do, if you're going to use that, especially if you're dealing with a small business, you know, choose wisely. Choose wisely and make sure it all fits together. Your whole voice, your whole online identity. Questions, ideas, share. Let's talk. Who here isn't on Twitter? I'm not. I'm not. Well, then you're lost. <laughs> uh, this is hashtag. And hashtag WC or uh, every word camp has a hashtag, and it's a way to aggregate the tweets. Um, the, the, the rocket launched yesterday. There was a hashtag Orion launch. It's a way for you know, how many billions of users there are on Twitter to all tweet different things, but if they put the same hashtag in there, you can aggregate them together. Yeah? Uh, for those who might be occasionally doing, like, writing content for other clients, and you have to match their voice as opposed to use your own, do you have any insight into how to make that a simpler process? <laughs> <laughs> That's a client services kind of thing. Maybe you should have been in the panel to hear about an agency. You know what? This is actually very relevant, what I was talking about as a developer, and you're dealing with clients, except you've got to put, you've got to put yourself in their shoes. You also have to educate them. Remember, the client's always right. The client's, or at least you let them think that. The client's always right, but if they're going in a wrong direction and they're not, you're the expert. When, you, when you're a developer, designer, you're the expert. They're paying you. So... Taking what I said and extending it to, you have a small business, a small, small little grocery store. It's one location. They don't have a site. They're, they're not on Facebook. Well, you share this with them. Same, I mean, the same thing applies. That's why I started out with Coca-Cola and the big companies. The same concepts apply all the way down to my little blog with eight posts. The same thing matters. How much money and energy I put into it versus what Coke does. Well, that's the difference. Do I need to? No. Do I have the money? No. So if you have a, a, a client that doesn't get it, and they're putting, you know, think back to the squirrel horse head thing. You know, if that's them and they think that works, well, if you can influence them and help educate them, uh, uh, clients can't always be swayed. <laughs> There's, um, isn't there, like, I, it's been a while since I've been doing this, but there's a website out there that will, is it like an owl or something where they, They'll update, you, you list all of your social... Food suite. Food suite. Food suite. Well, food suite, yeah. Towel. Right. And that, that <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of it. So, but the mail, 
it automatically updates for you, is it not, is not that? So you don't have to sit there and go to each account. Yeah, and, and that's ways to, to leverage social media. You know, let me finish about the hashtag. So we were talking about the hashtag. If you go out there, Hashtag WCORL. That's a way to extend. And those are all the comments. That and those are, yeah, everybody, anybody. You could, you could not be here. You could be living at the North Pole and just decide to tweet something and hashtag WCORL and it will get pulled in. That's what the hashtag is. And, that, and that's using social media effectively. So, yeah, you've got this great site. You're on Twitter, but you're not doing anything with it. Yeah, isn't that cool how it just... Updates. Somebody put something nice. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like Sheldon with the episode in Big Bang Theory where he comes home and he has all the tweets and the students all hated him. Do you really want to see it? <laughs> so, the Howard Stern is like, I don't go on it anymore because people are yeah. so nasty. As, a, as an educator, I dare not go to ratemyprofessors.com because I don't want to know what they think. <laughs> My class loves me, but I don't want to know what they think. Anything else? We only got a couple minutes left. Thank you, everybody, for listening and sharing. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy the rest of the sessions. Come back to the next WordCamp. Go to Miami. Go to Tampa. Yeah. Do you know what that Twitter plugin might be? That's <sighs> Yeah. David Bissett, Dimension Media. He was up there. Yeah, top right corner. He's everywhere. He's, he's in the, usually in the front row of a lot of the sessions. He's one of the experts. It's WP Armchair. Now, last year there was 2013 ORL.WPArmchair.com. They didn't set it up that way this year. So they just put it on the front page of the WordCamp's website. Yeah. I mean, it's more complex than that, but yeah, it's just it's just reading, it's aggregating the the hashtag. I see one last question in the corner. I'll talk to him. <laughs> yeah. Tweet, tweet it. Are oh, you on Twitter? Get on Twitter. <laughs>